Welcome back, Hookaholics. January's Mystery Tackle Box Elite showed up, so let's crack into it, shall we? January's Mystery Tackle Box, I get the Elite version. They have three tiers, Standard, Pro, and Elite. This is their highest tier. If you don't know, Mystery Tackle Box, it's a monthly subscription. You'll get a bunch of lures uh, shipped to your house, uh, and, and you can try new manufacturers, new styles, new techniques, and really get a, an overall general multi-purpose set of tackle into your mailbox which lets you go out to the lake river whatever tributary you want and uh and catch fish so uh we get a uh let's see you got a uh these new things a little code if you want to see what's supposed to be in my box or what's in my box inside is your what's inside card i will list all of the items down below in the description with a timestamp, so that if you want you can go straight to that particular brand and lure and see what it is if i have any insight i will gleefully share it with you if not i'll just go on to the next bait um but we've got two four six eight baits in our mystery tackle box for this month so let's see what we got we're going to start off uh this month or this as always with uh top number one and work our way down first is the engage twitcher so engage twitcher let's see what we got Twitcher, right there. So, from N-Gage, Soft Baits and Hard Lures, this is a Patrick Sibyl uh, design, so that's good, I like, I love Sibyl's designs. Um, this is from a band of anglers, so it's a high quality item right there. $14.50, this is called the Twitcher, it is, let's see, um, it's soft body, wire through design, treble hooked, and it is four inches, one and a half ounces, so it's a heavy bait. So let's see what we got. Let's open her up here. Now, Patrick Sibyl is known for some really amazing design lures. So you have, again, it's a soft, soft body lure. You can see me flexing it here. Uh, so it's a soft body lure, but it's a fully harnessed line through design. So it might be difficult to pick up on camera here, but inside you can see right in here, there is the line through harness, which runs down and another wire harness that runs uh, parallel here to the lateral line. Um, there's also a few little BBs here, I guess for added weight. Saltwater setup hooks, they've got that coating on there, uh, very sticky. Um, that's an interesting bait. Now, see, this is something that I really would enjoy throwing, uh, especially if I get a chance to go back to the shore and throw for, you know, for saltwater fish. But this is a great little bait. And again, at an ounce and a half, uh, it's quite a quite a substantial bait. More, like I say, more for casting out, um, you know, surf fishing or even boat fishing. Uh, this would be nice. Twitcher sinking, again, four inches, one and a half ounces long. Um, that's pretty awesome. It has a side-to-side -side roll on the fall. So as it falls down, it's going to roll back and forth. And then as you actually work the bait back towards you, it's going to do that simple twitching back and forth. Darting action that we know all fish cannot resist. And I'm stuck on the, on the hooks. So that's pretty cool. Fourteen fifty. growing up the shore, I know this kind of bait um, is definitely worth that price range. I mean, I've I've come across baits growing up, you know, and I'm talking back in the early 90s, late 80s, um, that back in that day were $30 uh, a piece. So it's not uncommon to find a $15 uh, bait for saltwater wares. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, I don't exactly personally believe this is more of, uh, of a freshwater bait. I would use this for saltwater primarily. From Spro, we have the Fat Papa SB. Spro, Fat Papa three to five foot diving, half ounce, 
and it's a circuit board chip crankbait in a very spring color. Woo. Come back here, don't get stuck to the sofa. So, there you go, you got that circuit board computer chip lip. Really cool eyes. Gotta love those eyes. And an amazing paint job. This is definitely a spring color. Fat Papa 55 SB. Again, it runs three to five feet. What's the color on this? What do they give you? They call this Honey Crawl. Honey Crawl. It remind, it's, it's funny because this actually reminds me more of like uh, Frosted Flakes, uh, Tony the Tiger, uh, personally. So, so let's see. Is it, is it there? Right. <laughs> we'll see how that flies. I'm really interested. I'll definitely be tossing this uh, once the water warms up um, during, that, during that crawfish uh, return because then I know this color is definitely going to get action and reaction. Um, that's pretty cool. Half ounce. It's got Gamagatsu hooks on it, and we all know that Gary, uh, that uh, Gamagatsu makes some some great great hooks. It's balsa bait action, deflects off a of cover, so it's designed to mimic balsa uh, baits. So that's pretty cool. And I love my balsa uh, crank baits. I love my all my balsa wood baits. Uh, it's one of the things that I do cherish and protect in a very specific uh, case. Obviously, this isn't true balsa, but uh, I'll, I'll treat it the same. I think especially with that little circuit board chip. Uh, again, that was $12.99 for that guy. Next up for $7.99, we have a Berkeley Digger. We've had these in the past. Um, I've got these at, uh, at Ollie's multiple times for like $3, $4. This is one of those great baits. As you can see, it's still, uh, you know, within the times. It's still a new, fresh bait. It's even it, it's, it surpasses and lasts the testament of time for seven dollars and 99 cents here this is a 3.5 digger so it runs three to five foot again uh, it's a quarter ounce and it is rattling so this one got a nice little rattle tone to it not bad again these diggers are really great they they work awesome uh deflecting off of hard bottom it's got that little shad spot to clue, cue the, uh, the false eye, to cue the fish in, to hit more center mass, which is always good. Super sharp little hooks. Now, these are interesting. Oh, and never mind. That's a hair on it. For a minute, it almost looked like it had a, um, like the hook came up and it had two spears coming off of it, but it was just a little piece of paper or, or fuzz or something on the hook. Um, slow rise, which is good for me. I love slow rise lures especially when i'm bank angling i do fish a lot of wood cover a lot of grass lines stuff like that so being able to dig this down pause it and if it is kind of gently hung up it'll float back out and slowly rise up out of the out of the obstruction and then you can start working it again you know overpass and, and back down to depth so that's pretty cool i appreciate that again seven dollars and uh 99 cents next from Hyperplastics, we have Hyperplastics, another Patrick Sibyl's design. This is their Minow, M-I-N-W-A-O-W, Minwow. <laughs> so it's a uh, two and three quarter inches, little white pearl and, and uh, silver flake soft plastics. They call this, uh, oh, they don't have a color on it, so pull this out here grab one out of the pack unfortunately it's stapled at the top come on open up pass the stick there we go attention to detail so you've got these little eyes it's got protruding little pectoral fins on either side you get a good look at them white with silver flake it has a small, you can barely make it out, but there's a, a small severing between the tail and body um, that is actually a hook slot. So it's got a little hook slot. Let's see if I can open it up there. So you got a little hook slot right there for your hardware, for your, for your terminal tackle. It's got a reverse boot. Now something like this, I've said this before, um, fishing the chatterbait. 
So when you're fishing chatterbaits, you tend not to want to run a boot tail because the boot tails, typically like this, are going to, um, you know, kick back and forth and, and they're going to not match the vibration of the head. So one of the tricks, Tactical Bassin actually did this years ago, was he suggested, A, with your standard boot tails, just clipping it off so that all you have is the tiniest little razor edge you take the entire boot off and you just basically leave that connecting point right there and then you have this thin little flat line that would match the vibration the other trick is to actually rotate it and push the boot up so this little bay here i think would be really good reversed and put on upside down on something like the stealth blade or the mini chatter baits and uh, i have a few of the mini chatter baits that i use on my ultralights so this is really something that I think I'm going to throw over there and use on the mini chatterbait upside down so that that boot is actually going to fold down in the water and it'll have more of a uh, uh, cadence to match the vibration of the blade in front. So that's really cool. And you get four of them in the pack. So I like that. I like that. I'm looking forward to popping those in the water and seeing what I can catch. White, most, a lot of anglers don't like white baits. I don't mind them, and I can always go back with a magic marker or, um, you know, the Dippets dye uh, ink pens. Uh, add both the scent and color to them. Add a little chartreuse, add a little green or red, um, depending on which Dippet pen I grab, or dipping them in the Dippin Glow or what have you to add color to the blank white canvas. Other than that, white has never failed me catching catching fish. And one of the things that I like to do, again, um, you know, on Josh's uh, channel, uh, you know, he had that, uh, the uh, fire craw chatterbait, and he had a white grub with a red tail. The red tail matched the chatterbait's fire craw color pattern, but that little bit of white body gave depth to the, to the skirt of the chatterbait and it was this soft, subtle tone difference between the interior white color, pearl, and the exterior pulsating um, skirt material in the bright red and orange that I found uh, worked very well in attracting fish that were otherwise a little uh, apprehensive for attacking. When I had shot uh, the same exact chatterbait with an all red-bodied profile soft plastic, I didn't get nearly enough reaction when I switched over to the white main body for whatever reason, I, like I said, I think it added more depth and allowed that pulsation to be more apparent compared to like red on red or white on white, not being able to see the skirt move as much. I got far more strikes, far more uh, fish landed. So uh, I was happy to see it worked out for him too. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to look forward to this. Uh, this was $7.50 for the Hyperlastics. Uh, again, it's a Patrick Sibyl uh, design. Four to go, halfway done. Carl's Amazing Baits Spinner Bait. So we got a Carl's, Carl's stash, kind of. So we had a Carl's Amazing Baits Double Willow Mustad Hook 3 8 ounce in the Chartreuse and White Spinner Bait. We've had these before. We had those in, I think we had this exact same one also in our uh, MTB Reserve Crate. So we'll put that aside. That one goes for $5.99. Uh, three to go. We got the Phoenix Baits All-Purpose Jig. Now that's good for the winner. So we have a Phoenix Bates jig in the 3 8 ounce, and this is a nice green pumpkin purple tone. Pop you out of the bag here. Let's see. So, again, it's a nice green pumpkin. A little bit of brown and root beer color in there, too. And, uh, and purple. It has the weed guard, as you can see. A nice gaff of a hook on it. Let's see what to say what size hook it comes with. Uh, they call this uh, bruiser color. It's black, blue, purple. Um, must add ultra grip, oh, excuse me, ultra point hook, but they don't give me a size. But uh, I don't know, maybe three aught, four aught. So there's that. It's got the shank keeper here. You got the little mushroom head, and then you got a ring keeper on the shank. You've got, like I said, the uh, the weed guard. There's that purple brown tone, and it is a nice round head, great for bouncing off the bottom, 
or swimming, and it's got the the upward angled recessed uh, line tie. So that puts your knot kind of protects it beyond the round part of the uh, of the jig head. So that means as you're bouncing it around, you're less likely to ding up and weaken your knot, and that's you're not going to lose it as easily. So that's pretty cool. Phoenix does some good colors. Um, there's plenty of jigs out there. A lot of people make their own. Uh, I have no problem with Phoenix jigs. And they go for $4.50 for that jig. Uh, next to last, X-Zone Lures. We have another Adrenaline Bug. This is the Adrenaline Bug Junior. No, we don't. I don't have it in here. Okay, we'll skip that and we'll go to the last one, which is the Gambler's Flappin' Shad, which is here. Four-inch white shads. Um... Evidently, the adrenaline bug was not in my box. Cool thing about these, these are great um, for umbrella rigs. Um, these are great trailers on a lot of different things. These aren't your boot tails. These aren't a pin tail. These are these little paddles. It's flat, and the paddle runs perpendicular to the body. So the, the body's here. This is your belly. This is your, I'll put it this way, back, belly. You can see the shape. And then the paddle actually runs flat this way, as opposed to most things which would have it this way to kick up and down. This one's going to swim left and right. Again, this is another great design made perfectly for uh, mating with a chatterbait because it's going to kick this way. It's not designed to actually work like a jerkbait where you'd want it to kick up and down to keep your rise and fall in the water column. This one will go side to side and give you more of that s waiver style uh presentation really cool again another great chatterbait uh design this is three dollars and 19 cents so the only thing i cannot show for 374 was the exxon lures adrenaline bug jr i've had them in the past but unfortunately it's not in my box so that was an oversight in packing and the piece de resistance what we all all tune in and wait for something i haven't had before a new one wish this had shown up in my Ketchco Carl's MTB Reserve. A new sticker! So a Torpedo Bomber Ketchco sticker. That's pretty cool. So it's a little uh, tri-hook torpedo-esque shaped uh, sticker. So that, that's cool. That's definitely going on my wall of stickers. I like that. I might even put this on the boat. Alrighty. Um... This was real quick, not much to see, but it's the, uh, the MTB for January. What do you think? Do you think, uh, I know to me it doesn't fit necessarily the time of year, uh, but it's definitely got a lot of sp uh, spring baits like the, uh, the Honey Craw, definitely going to use that in the spring. Um, certainly going to use the, uh, these two guys. This I could use right now, like I said, on my ultralights. The jig, definitely. The spinner bait, definitely. These are great winter cold water baits that work well, uh, cover water. But uh, as far as the gamblers and the craw, that's definitely more spring. The digger 3.5, you can use this all year round. Definitely use that all around. But this guy, this guy, I'm just going to hold off and use in my saltwater arsenal. Um, not really thinking about using this for fresh water. It's a little heavy, and uh, it's just I've got other baits that have the same profile, have, have the same colorway. And uh, can do just, I think, as good a job in a freshwater setup uh, rather than this guy. But uh, what do you think? Do you think this was a good box? Tell me down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you spending some time with me. And don't forget, I'm always looking for your catch photos, tackle photos, man cave photos of fishing stuff. Anything fishing related that you want to share. Um, don't forget to drop me photos in uh, the foul mouth gmail account i'll lift this list the uh, they got right here send the photos over and i'll pop them into my videos as i go forward for me to you as always peace and i'll catch you on the next cast have a good one hookaholics